I, I particularly appreciated how you talked about even when we're recalling our own dream, it's our memory of the dream. It's not the dream itself. Yes. And that, and that um, whenever I hear someone else's dream, I can only respond as if it were my own dream. That's, yep. that's beautiful. Now, See, and I would say that isn't just true of dream work. That's right. true. Oh, of, of course. Everything. Yes, that's exactly right. And that's why it's such a profound um, point. So, so I actually experienced a bit of helpless, a feeling of helplessness um, when you gave that example of the dream of the snake that was as big as a truck because my symbology of a snake is that it is the divine feminine and that it was so that that's why it was written that Eve was seduced by the snake because it was the pagans. It was the, so that is such a fundamentally different experience of that symbol than what you explained, which is that for you, it's the divine masculine. I mean, well, you see, I would say that to the extent that the story presents Eve and the snake as different folk, and it, we should remember that when Lucifer arrives, he's not a snake. That's part of the curse that YHVH puts on him. He goes, you're going to do this in my house? Well, enough with your arms and legs and wings. You're going to go on your belly on the ground. But when she's having the conversation, Lucifer is a light bringer. And that's what the Gnostics have said all along. They said that his name is not an accident and that the divine is not to be recognized as the one with the most upper torso strength. The divine is to be recognized by the one who speaks the truth. So and I didn't I didn't actually mean for us to like go down deeper into that symbol, but we have the experience of snake means something really different to me than it means to you. It's so different. Well, I'm not sure that's true. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to do is to say, yes, I totally appreciate snake is the friend of the goddess. Mm -hmm. The snake is the goddess's primary animal avatar, not just in the Hebrew Bible, but all kinds of sacred narrative and that the snake implies what is stereotypically masculine in that it's not just that it looks visually like a penis and occasionally lifts up as though it's a, in an erection. I mean, that's true, but that's not the most important point. The most important point is that the snake embodies a split second of decisive action. And that is as much a feminine energy as it is a masculine energy. But it has been claimed by the masculine since the hunter-gatherer days. The hunters had to make split-second decisions a great deal more often than the gatherers did. But they all had to do it. Vegetables don't attack your back. <laughs> yeah. And that there is a lot to be said. One of the reasons I say it is that Institutional sexism injures women in ways which are increasingly becoming conscious and increasingly becoming talked about. And that in the dream world, one of the ways you can notice a female dreamer who has been injured by the masculine is that in waking life, she is often an exceptionally able administrative associate and actually runs the show and understands what's going on and understands the ramifications of what's going on way better than the males who sign the documents, but who cannot bring that same perspicacity to making decisions in her own life. She knows it would be a good idea to quit her job and go back to school, but she can't find the split second of decisive action where she can quit her job and go back to school. There's always some reason why the time isn't exactly right and the consequences haven't been adequately analyzed. 
And that has to do with the archetypical energy, which really isn't gendered at all, but which has been associated more with the masculine than the feminine from really deep prehistoric times. And when that gets healed, it is often the case that snakes appear in the woman's dreams and are no longer sources of fear and apprehension. Fear and apprehension is usually replaced by a sudden surprising sense of how beautiful. The snake appears and the first response isn't, oh my God, I'm threatened by the snake. The first response is, look at how beautiful that snake is. Oops, it's a snake. My habitual response is terror but it's not my first response anymore. And as a long time dream worker, I know that that has to do with at least 99 times out of 100, maybe 100 times out of 100, with healing the injuries of institutional sexism in the dreamer's personal life and acquiring as a result of that healing, a kind of independence which the woman could certainly argue that she had, that, she, you know, she doesn't have any difficulty thinking, she doesn't have any difficulty doing really exquisite analysis, doesn't have any difficulty in knowing what the appropriate decision ought to be. It's just sort of an embarrassing sideline that she can't quite bring those energies to bear in her own life. Uh, Mothers who tend to direct the lives or attempt to direct the lives of their adult children, for example, as a sociological group, tend to be in that category more often than not. It's also true that the association of the snake with healing, the two snakes twined around the caduceus, even today, being a magical image, if you have that image on your license plate, you can park in a no parking zone and not get a ticket. That's how powerful the magic is still today. Those snakes, are carriers of wisdom. They are avatars of the voice of wisdom. And one of the things that institutional sexism does to men is that it puts tremendous and as yet not fully organized and recognized pressure on men not to grow up. One of the worst depredations of sexism is that it convinces so many otherwise smart and capable men that they should not mature. They should not arrive at the totally recognizable masculine point of maturity of looking at the world and going, you don't need to do this for me. I don't need this bogus edge over every woman in the world. As a matter of fact, I would prefer that it wasn't there. I would prefer to be able to have relationships with women that were as vital and interesting and supportive as my relationships with men parens, not often spoken aloud, which aren't as supportive and interesting as I would like them to be really. And this destruction and oppression of maturity in men is one of the terrible and not yet acknowledged to the same extent that it is for women as a group, evil consequences for men. And men have the additional bogus idea that the snake belongs to them, that it's their snake. But of course it's not. It's the ability to act, the ability to know when the right moment for action is and the level of self-acceptance to recognize the moment and actually do it. And that issue 
The split second of decisive action issue shows up in the dreams of both men and women a lot of the time. I'm not, I don't even want to hazard a percentage at this point, but a great deal of the time, men and women, that issue shows up clothed in the archetypal form of the snake. 